So we got most of our grain bagging done. Um, we got one bag left, and that's for a uh, guy we custom farm a couple quarters for. As far as all of ours, we got our bags picked up, which usually takes us quite a bit longer because usually we put out anywhere from 13 to 18 bags. Well, this year we only had to put out five thanks to that guy over there. And so that kind of sped that process up a little bit more. A little bit less work for us. My brother got his planter all done. Uh, this is the one I kind of showed tearing down before. We got it put back together. What we done on this one is replace these air cylinders, which we're going to do on mine. And then we went through these front pieces here and replaced all the bad bearings in them. Uh, I'm not, sh I can't remember exactly all, but we did replace his true V's or the discs openers on his. Um, everything back, these were new a couple years ago, so most of these were good. And then we go through and inspect everything else just to make sure it's in order. Um, we kind of take notes from last year to see what we need to replace if there's any bad sensors or harnesses or anything like that. So um, hopefully his is pretty much field ready now um, as far as the planter goes. We got our strip tillers done too. All the bearings are replaced in it so hopefully they'll be ready to roll. The implements themselves might be done and ready to go. There's still stuff like we got our tractors being inspected at deer right now. And so there's stuff to get ready to go on them. We also put a lot of fertilizer on both with the strip tillers and the planters. And so what we'll do is we still got to put those tanks in. I'll show you these back here. But it's not just like what I'm trying to say is there's not just planters you hook up and go once it's ready. There's a lot of plumbing that goes on involved and that'll be right before we hook everything up. We got these tanks here that will go on the tractors. Here's uh, the, the plumbing and the pumps that will mount up to it. Those are the axles that go on, on the, they hook up. You'll bolt those on the outside of the hub there. We'll show you that in a later video. So I'm replacing the battery. Side note, for the life of me, it's stuck in there. So I didn't have much time, so I gave up on it, but I'll look forward to it. I better take this back to the shop before somebody gets mad at me. This one's the planter I use. I got, last week I got everything tore off of it. Like my brothers, we're gonna be replacing those uh, air cylinders from Precision, pre 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 precision? <laughs> precision Planning. Not all of them are bad, but I had bad luck with them last year, so we're just gonna start fresh and save the good ones for spares this year. Um, I just had a lot of them leak back. I don't know why. I don't know if there's a bad batch or some reason, but I had a lot of them go out. And so I'm just starting out afresh so I don't have to hopefully worry about them too much. Also with the clean sweep, I have to replace this. There's an air compressor uh, pump up in here. I don't know if I'll be able to take this out, but it's up in this guy. This is the air where the air accumulates for the clean sweep. Here's the pump I got to replace. On mine, I'm also replacing the packer wheels in the back with these guys. These are kind of I get them out of shoop. I don't know who makes them exactly. I, they're Susie, Sousy. I'm not exactly sure how you, I'm never sure how you say those names. What we're hoping with these is they're easier to change the bearings in because it's just a snap ring and you tap that out versus the deers where you got bolts all over and they suck apart. And sometimes those can be a pain in the field. See where I'm replacing them because a lot of mine are the plastic edges are getting wore out of them. This one's probably should have been replaced last year, but it was just on beans and I said, forget about it. These are what they'll look like once we get them on. I put a couple on. The only thing, and maybe you guys can help me out, but I had to get different machine bushings because the spacing was different on these. And to get them to line up with deers, I had to use, I'm not using the deer bushings or spacers. But I got some machine bushings that are narrower and I just kind of double these up and that's about where it needs to be. So I don't know, it worked on my brothers, so that's what I'm doing to this. But everything's tore apart. I got the the speed tubes out or this the exact emerge tubes out. And the brushes wear out on them after a while. This is two seasons worth. It's not terrible. That's just kind of frayed because it set there. But these will get kind of an indentation in them and so you want to replace these whenever they get bad enough or whenever it's necessary depending on acres 
we got the brushes over here they come in a box like this those are a little more expensive than i thought they would be but spacing is important at least somewhat important so i'll kind of show you just a row unit stripped down of what an exact emerge kind of looks like on this one we have the individual downforce which is hydraulic powered that way each row can get its own uh, downforce what what it specifies and how's that's how that is measured is through this guy right here this this is actually a sensor because there's a cable that kind of runs up along here and it plugs in up front there to a brain that tells it hey we need more or less down pressure for this individual row so then it just tells the cylinder and it applies more hydraulic downforce or less I think these are different from precision in the way that these do not have up force or they can suck it up. This one's just down or neutral, which is fine, I believe, on a CCS model because when you got a box on, say you have a three, foot, three bushel box, which a lot of planners do, well, you have a potential of 150 pounds already on that unit. Well, you might need that up force, but as you lower, you kind of, it, it varies through the field so you have less weight and so you might want up force on box boxes I'm not sure I've never ran down force on a box planner like this I've ran air force before when this used to have the air force and it had the up pressure when we had boxes on this so no that's the that's the individual row down force on ours we do run fertilizer and so that comes around here and we run it pretty a simple setup we used to run the Keaton seed firmers for you farmers the no um, we've also ran the Shaffert spoons but we actually ended up on this one and actually there's someone we really like it doesn't touch anything in the row it's simple it's basic and so that's right up our alley anyway this is where we'll actually put our our true V on to our disc opener and so what these are, are shims because you want to have it spaced just right and I'll show you here in a little bit when you put one on you want to have two inches of touch in front of the blades meaning that the touch will be about two inches and I'll show you that and uh, these are our, our fur openers we just run uh, the shark tooth and that's where we put the air ones so this is your two motors for your exact emerge these are electric motors this one will turn your brush belt and this one will turn your meter so these are vacuum planters up there is what creates the vacuum and what that means is these seeds will be sucked up against a plate and I'll show you later once I get this kind of put together but it'll create a vacuum which will allow the seeds to drop in a uniform application onto the brush belt and then the brush belt carries it to the bottom to the seed trench to accurately better space your seed hopefully and that's the goal anyway but what I'm gonna do um, I'll put together a row unit here just to kind of show you what I do to essentially just Put a row unit back together, I guess. Okay, so I got the true V's mounted up here, the disc openers, whatever. And uh, what you want to do, you come along here, you slap these on, you tighten these to 90 foot pounds of torque. At least that's what the manual says. And then what you do, you come along here with business cards, and I'm going to do this one handed. And you want to make sure there's two inches of gap in here, or else you got to add new spacers. I started with the factory ones. It doesn't always mean it's going to work. It looks like it's a little wide right now. I'm just going to take my tape measure here. Looks a little wide for my eyeball it. So yeah, we're almost... Actually, let me spin it around a couple times just to make for good measure. So I'm going to spin this around. You want to make sure you don't get that pinched in there. Because I already pinched myself. Kind of rolling them around a little bit just to, for good measure. See where we're at. So we're almost... I'm going to call it two and three quarters by the time I kind of flex it around there. So that's a little wide. You want it between one and a half and two is kind of the range I like it in. So what that means I got to do is take these back apart and then add one of these guys in there. This will just kind of space them out a little bit further so hopefully we get near that two inch. So what I'm going to do, I think I'm going to add one on each side. And
I'm going to call that close enough for horseshoes. It might be just a touch. Of course, some of that could be just the way they're sitting in there too. So I want it to be pretty close to that two inch range. It's like a tick off. We'll call it good. I mean, it's not like we're planning for the Olympics here. Come on, people. It's Nebraska. Calm down. It's not an ice day. So what we do after the true V's are set fine, they come with rubber caps to put back on. Shit pop on. One of the other things I'd like to do while we're here is to kind of inspect these guys just to make sure these will wear out. These are just little bushings that kind of keep your, your doohickey straight. There, there's going to be a little slop in there, but not, but not be that much. There's a lot because that's going to track over your true V trench. Well, if you that's slopping too much, it could have the potential to get out of whack and then you're not packing your seed trench right. Next thing on the list we could do is our seed tubes. This is what releases the tension, I believe, on your seed tube. That's tension. This is untensioned. That is a high speed brush belt mechanism. You can see the grooving's not bad, but it's showing up. Some are worse than others for some reason. Gonna leave it untensioned so it's not stretching that belt. But we'll tension them right before we go to planting if we remember. We'll figure it out eventually. All we gotta do next. Let's put our depth wheels on, our gauge wheels, whatever you want to call them. Tighten these to 200 foot-pounds of torque. And you kind of want to have a little bit of a... You don't want them super tight up. You want to check them to see how they are kind of right there. Um, I'm not sure if I'll be able to film this very well, but it should just have a slight, a little bit of play, but not a much. You kind of want them fairly, I don't know how to describe it, but you want them snug, but not going to rub the tire off against that true V there. That's kind of how I set them anyway, because there's, there's always a little bit of slop in this, not much. You don't want a ton in there. If there's a lot, then you need to replace that. Yeah, you just kind of got to set them so there's not much room. They're not tied up against there, but they're not gonna get a bunch of dirt up in there so yeah we'll call that well I'll put the phone down and get it right but that might be a little much I'm not I'll put it down and mess with it but how you adjust these though you loosen this and this actually threads in and out which um, moves this back and forth and that's how you create that adjustment there and so that's kind of what I, I'll do um, it's getting late in the day here I, I had to do some other stuff today but I got that one unit put together that's kind of how we do it the measuring and all that stuff with the true V's and hopefully I explained mostly everything else that we'll do to this planner. I don't know if I'll, I'll run another video on it or not, but uh, I guess if you guys have a lot of questions and I need to answer my, I might do another video, but if I do a good enough job on this one to answer kind of what we do when we go through these machines, uh, maybe I'll leave it at that. No, yeah, if you do have any questions about um, what we do on our planners or any more going in depth on how these work, um, I usually miss a lot of things because I do this every day and a lot of stuff you know you just kind of slip on by but um, if you're really wanting to know I'll try to either answer in the comments below or maybe if you leave a comment below I'll even try to answer in the next upcoming video or something. That's planning part two. Thanks guys. We'll catch you on the next one.